Today we're talking TikTok pasta, but we're going to make it even better. Hey everyone, my name is Caitlin. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I make easy to follow, delicious and accessible vegan recipes. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel and that sounds good to you, go ahead and click that little button right down there to get alerted of all my new yummy recipe content. Today we're talking pasta, more specifically that ever-present viral TikTok pasta with that baked feta and tomato concoction that is literally on all corners of the internet. I don't even personally go on TikTok, but I've seen so many people recreated on Instagram, whether it's the vegan version or the traditional version. I just feel kind of baked feta pasta out. And honestly, I ain't even made the recipe. I feel like it's kind of like a basic caprese flavor combo though. So, I mean, honestly, I don't really think I'm missing out on much. But that being said, brief history. That recipe was originally developed by one Finnish blogger in 2018. It looks really delicious. Hers a little more complicated. Then in 2019, another Finnish blogger kind of recreated the concept that we're discussing today where she roasted the feta and tomatoes in the oven. But then in 2020, an American blogger translated the recipe and this is what went viral. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Apparently it's controversial. These are just the facts. But either way, we're not exactly going to veganize our recipe. Like I said, there are already a million recipes out there that are doing that exact same thing. But we're going to take the concept of roasting vegetables in the oven, cooking pasta separately, and combining them to make a delicious, wholesome, and super easy meal. So today I'm going to show you three different variations or flavors that you can go for. They're all really unique, really delicious, and I think there is something for everyone. And can I also say that you can make all of these in just over 30 minutes? So it's literally the perfect weeknight dinner. Okay, let's get into them. First up, we're going to be making a spring vegetable pesto pasta. To start, you're going to need about a nine by 13 size casserole dish. And we're going to add some zucchini, yellow squash, asparagus, optional Kalamata olives, don't at me olive haters, and some red chili flakes. And then we're just going to drizzle olive oil over everything you want to use between two and four tablespoons. Then last but not least, give everything a good seasoning with salt and then mix everything together. And we're going to bake this in the oven at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. While that bakes, we're going to bring some salted water to a boil, add in some pasta and cook it according to the package directions. You can use any pasta you'd like here. I'm using rotini because I think it holds sauce nicely, but I'm using a gluten-free pasta. You could use regular pasta too. But after about 30 minutes have passed, your veggies should be nice and golden. And then you're going to add your cooked pasta directly to the dish along with half of a cup of pesto. I'm using my vegan nut-free pesto. I'll link the recipe below. But if you're in a pinch, you could also use a store-bought pesto too. Just make sure um, if you're vegan that it is vegan because some of them have cheese in them. But anyways, you're gonna mix it together, get this nice, beautiful, vibrant color and then it's ready to serve and enjoy. You can season with additional salt or pepper to taste if you'd like. I really like this recipe because it's packed with veggies and the asparagus and the squash cook perfectly together in the oven. Next up, we're going to be making a spinach and artichoke pasta with a vegan lemon butter parmesan sauce. Oh yes. So again, same concept here. We're gonna roast some veggies. We're starting with some marinated artichoke hearts, mushrooms, and capers this time. We're also adding a little bit of garlic powder and black pepper to taste. And then I like to use artichokes that are packed in oil, so you only need about maybe a tablespoon of oil for this. But if you're getting ones that come in a can that don't have any oil, you might need to add more just to prevent everything from sticking. So you're going to give everything a good mix. And then again, pop this in the oven. And in the meantime, we'll cook our pasta. This time I decided to use some penne. Again, you can literally use whatever shape you'd like. I just kept a different for each recipe because you know, variety is the spice of life. So then after your veggies are done cooking, they should look a little bit something like this. The mushrooms will have shrunk down a lot. I'm adding my spinach here. I actually recommend straining your pasta over the spinach. That way it will quickly blanch with the hot water and then adding both of them to the dish. Um, I found that my spinach took a little bit too long to wilt here. But at this point, you're going to add in a tablespoon of vegan butter and then sprinkle 
some shredded vegan Parmesan on top, as well as the juice of half of a lemon. And the heat from the pasta is just going to melt our butter and cheese and make a really creamy sauce here. So it just takes a little bit of patience and time, but you can just stir everything together. Um, and then this is what the finished results look like. You might have a few pieces of Parmesan still, but I kind of like that. But the butter should be totally melted and each noodle should be coated. This recipe is like creamy, tangy, saucy. I like the briny aspect of the capers and the artichoke hearts too. All in all, A plus for me. <laughs> that was really lame. Okay. Anyways, last but not least, we're going to be making a spicy vegan chorizo pasta with roasted tomato sauce. So this recipe is most similar to that TikTok pasta because we are gonna be roasting tomatoes. We're gonna add it to a dish with some onion. And then I'm adding sliced garlic cloves here. If you mince it, the garlic could burn. So when you leave it in larger pieces, this allows a nice roasted garlic flavor to our dish and they sort of melt in your mouth once they're baked anyways. And then here I'm using a vegan chorizo. I got mine at Trader Joe's. I have some substitutions listed in the blog post, but really if you can get your hands on vegan chorizo, I think that's the best because it has a lot of added spices to it that give this pasta a nice extra kick. So again, we're gonna drizzle everything with olive oil, probably about two tablespoons this time. Then we're going to add in some salt. And then if you want it to be spicy, you can add in red chili flakes. I'm a little heavy handed here because personally, I love spice. So you're going to mix everything together. Just make sure that the chorizo is finely crumbled and everything is pretty evenly distributed. Then we're going to bake this in the oven at 400 degrees for 28 minutes. And then again, we're going to cook our pasta while that's in the oven. This time you wanna make sure that you're only cooking your pasta to al dente. So check your package instructions because with this recipe, we will be mixing the pasta and returning it to the oven for a short amount of time. So this is what it should look like once it's roasted. The chorizo gets nice and crispy. And now you're gonna take the back of a spoon and smash those tomatoes and the tomatoes are going to release their liquid and form a really nice thick hearty sauce it's so so good honestly this might be my favorite recipe of the bunch okay then we're gonna add our pasta to the dish and mix it until it's well combined and then here I'm using a spoon to spread the top of the pasta to make sure it's flat because now we're gonna cover it with vegan cheese. I use about three fourths of a cup of vegan mozzarella here, but you could totally do a cup. I feel like if you really want things cheesy, um, you don't really need to measure, you can just sprinkle it on top. But then we're gonna broil this in the oven for three to five minutes. And as you can see, the cheese gets nice and melted. The pasta, personally I like when like the edges get a little bit of crispy on top, kind of like a lasagna. So you can season with extra red pepper flakes to taste if you'd like, but you're ready to serve and enjoy. I just love all of the textures and flavors of this recipe and how they combine. It's like really gooey, cheesy, hearty, delicious. And the last finishing touch is to top this with some torn basil. It works really well with the tomatoes and just adds a note of freshness. It sort of cuts through some of the richness of the pasta sauce, but this is so, so good. You guys got to try this one too. Okay. Okay. All right, and that concludes my three TikTok upgrade pasta recipes. That didn't make sense, but you know what I mean. Leave a comment down below and let me know which flavor variation would be your favorite. Or if you've tried something along these similar lines and you think there's a flavor combination that I should try out, leave a comment below and let me know that as well. All of these recipes are also on my blog, so if you want to save them for later or get the full measurements or print the recipe out, they're all linked down in the description below, so be sure to check them out and look at the other drool-worthy, delicious photos. Uh, also, I post all of my content on Instagram, so if you're not following me yet over there, be sure to check me out over there. Shameless self-promo, okay? You gotta do what you gotta do. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe video, this style, this concept. Let me know if you want more things like this. Should I do like a taste test, an honest review of popular TikTok recipes? Should I ignore a TikTok altogether and move on with my life, which I've been trying to do, but it looks very appeasing, but also like a major time suck? I don't know. Leave a comment below and let me know. I hope you guys are having an awesome day and continue to have one, and I look forward to virtually seeing you soon. Bye.